That's right. We are back to the trusty notepad. Dan Campbell and his press conference takeaways for Monday, September 9th, 2024. I am really, really tired. Running off of three hours of sleep. Didn't go to bed until after 3 a.m. And it's funny because Dan Campbell was talking about how difficult it is to sleep after a game, uh, especially a night game. So, yeah, I think we're all probably running on fumes at this moment. But he talked about closing out the game and how the offense and defense were able to close out the game. The defense being able to uh, – actually, I went back and watched the the um, highlights, and it, it I was just there last night, so it wasn't even 24 hours ago, but everything is, like, so surreal and still sinking in that the defense had to step up. The Lions punted with, like, a, I think it was four minutes, three minutes, somewhere around there left. They punted the football, and that's before they were able to get it back and get into field goal range for Jake Bates, but how that the, the team was ever to – able to close out the game and that's what we were talking about in yesterday's video about things that separate good teams from great teams good teams from bad teams the Lions have been on the cusp of becoming a good team if you remember in 2021 I think when we didn't win our first game for 12 weeks we were in all of those games I mean from the very first one against the San Francisco 49ers yeah we were getting blown out at first but we came back and then we repeated that with the Philadelphia Eagles the next year so we've been unable to close out games until really last year and we did it in a big way this year we did it last year too it's a lot of similarities between this game and Kansas City last year uh so I like that he talked about J-Mo, how J-Mo had a big game, and we talked about that, or he mentioned it last night as well, about how he didn't even have the best game. And it's a lot for him to clean up, but that when he does, he's going to be something to be feared, basically. Got a lot of stuff to clean up, but he had a great game for the Detroit Lions and was really a difference maker. Also talked about Hutch and Davenport, and I see now that – Marcus Davenport was always going to be the answer to Aiden Hutchinson. When we signed this guy in free agency, he was going to be that guy. I don't know if the Lions were ever in the running for Matthew Judon. They're definitely not in the running for uh, Hassan Reddick. Matt, they believe in this defensive line, and Marcus Davenport is a guy that they believe in. They think he can be that guy opposite Hutch. We're going to see. He did get half a sack yesterday, but he talked about how dominant they were yesterday. Talked about the offense and too many, excuse me, too many three and outs. And I saw that too yesterday. It was just way too many three and outs. The offense, and, and this is going to tie into another point that he pro, uh, talked about, the preseason starters. Somebody asked him, based on how kind of stagnant the offense was, has has he considered maybe playing his his starters in the preseason and he was like no because what are they going to play 20 snaps he said he feels better getting those 50 60 snaps that he got in practice than putting those guys out there in the preseason so but there were too many three and outs yesterday the offense really didn't look the greatest they just they looked out of sync they looked out of sync but we got the win and he talked about that too like things are a lot better when you win and here's here's a quote that I heard a few years ago that I want you to remember. And when you watch my videos, I want you to think about this quote because this is exactly how I feel. There's a saying that winning cures everything. And that's not entirely true. The 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 proper saying is winning covers everything. Deficiencies on a team are not a big that big of a deal if you win the game. And Dan Campbell said Basically, things, it's a lot to clean up, a lot to work on, but things are a little bit better because we won. So he kept on stating that we won the game. We won the game. We won. The, this needs to change. This needs to get better, but we won the game. So winning doesn't cure everything. It covers everything. Somebody asked him about um, Carlton Davis, Terrion Arnold, and that they made plays, Kirby Joseph, basically the secondary. They made plays, but Dan Campbell's running theme was room to grow, always get better. That they made plays, but they've got lots of room to go to grow. And I see that he is expecting more out of this team, out of this defense. I can rock with that. I can rock with that because I think we all are expecting more, ready to get those turnovers, ready to get those pressures that turn into sacks, ready to get those quarterback hits 
that turn into ducks. You know, I like to call them Aflax, where they just float in the air and get picked off, right? So I, I'm liking that Dan Campbell is, he's saying, listen, wasn't the cleanest game, wasn't pretty. Yes, we got the win, but we got some work to do. And I like that because that means he's always trying to get better. Somebody asked him about the turf and, and did they think the turf was a problem and did they do anything to the field? And he's like, no, as far as I know, it's pretty much the same as it was. Um, you know, Rams was slipping. He, he said he attributes it to the guys that have been playing on it in a while. I mean, think about it. So they play, they did play in the preseason, but – Shout out to somebody in the comment section that said uh, Terion Arnold was the only starter that played in the preseason. So I guess they just got to literally get their footing underneath them. Talked about DJ Reader. And I just saw before I made this video that the Lions have waived defensive lineman Chris Smith. So now, if my math is correct, we now still have 52 on the roster. So we went from, we had 52 on Saturday. We bring up Chris Smith, and now we're back down to 52 because he was number 53. So we waived him. So here's the thing. They waived him with the expectation, in my opinion, of bring, bringing Reader back to the active roster because it was something that Dan Campbell said that kind of, you know, I kind of read in between the lines a little bit, is that their target for DJ Reader to return was Tampa. It's always been Tampa, but that's only if he's ready. And we know the Lions are not going to rush anybody, you know, when it comes to healing. They're not going to rush anybody. So if they waived Chris Smith with the intention of bringing up D or, you know, bringing DJ Reader, activating him, well, no, DJ Reader's already on the roster. So they waived him. So that means, that means that there, there's another spot and I'm wondering if it's going to be a wide receiver because yesterday, yesterday we I didn't see Isaiah Williams at all. I don't even know if he was out there. I did see Vaki out there for at least a play. Um, so I'm wondering if they're back to that 53 spot, and that could possibly bring a wide receiver. But he talked about the the DJ Reader how. Barring a setback, they want to get him involved on Sunday. So that's a good sign. Looking for DJ Reader to play. Talked about the DB growth and specifically Brian Branch. How Brian Branch is a football player and making plays. And it was something that that he said. Brian Branch, man, we we listen. The Lions got they do have grit on their team. You know what I mean? Like when you when you hear, I know I complain I cry a lot because I'm ready to win that y'all say I cry but I'm ready to win and I see nothing but I have blinders on I see winning games winning championships at least one right I think after that I'll relax a little bit until that I'm gonna be this this uptight like it's, it's going to happen and who knows I might still be the same but he talked about Brian Branch and I think about back when Brian Branch was drafted and he fell to the second round He's sitting there furious. I can't remember if he was the last one in the green room, but I believe he was. I remember when he came out, just the look on his face. And he missed some tackles yesterday. He came up. Dan Campbell said he came up to him and told him, I won't miss those tackles again. How personal these guys take their job. Like, I love it. You're talking about loving your job and loving who you do your job for, right? Have you ever had a boss that you go to work, you get paid, but you hate working for that guy or that girl, right? Hate it. Brian Branch said, not going to happen again. He took accountability, took it personal, and assured coach it will not happen again. Fantastic. And the last thing was David Montgomery. David Montgomery asked him, okay, when David, when you fed Monty to start the overtime, Monty ran it five times, all right? Jameer once, and we had one pass to Jameer Gibbs. Once he, you could see he was feeling it. Did you say, you know, we're just going to feed this guy? He said, Ben Johnson called a game, but you could see like Monty was, was coming on. He was turning it up. It's like, so my thing is, why do we get away from that? I don't understand why we, and, and it seems like the third quarter woes are still a thing. Now, granted, it is game one. We have four games until it's funny how the first quarter of the season is now preseason. And it makes you wonder, okay, well, 
it, why even have preseason? You, you're having preseason for the bubble guys to basically fill out the roster, but it is some terrible, terrible football in September. It really is. And the worst part about it is September can make or break your season. Remember, if you start 0-2, I think it has been only, man, I should have I should have looked this up. I used to know this by heart. Put it in the comment section if you guys care to. I forgot, if, if you start 0-2, only so many teams starting 0-2 have made the playoffs. And 0-3 is even worse, right? So it's a critical time in the NFL season, but it's also very sloppy, ugly, you know, non-coordinated football. But the Lions were able to win, and we've talked about this since last night's postgame show, that that is what makes a good team. In 2021, they couldn't quite, quite finish. We've seen that 2022, they couldn't finish. They dug, they were in such a hole that they could not get out. They had to rely on all these things to happen just to make the playoffs. And they took care of their business, but they needed another team to do that. And, and it, it wasn't a success, right? And then last year, how they were able to start finishing, closing out games. Defense would make some plays. I think our offense carried this team, but this year I would like to see the defense. I would like to see the defense consistently close out games the defense closed out the Kansas City Chiefs game but had a lot of drops a lot of drops in that game right saw defense could not close up what happened to LA last night was what happened to us in 2023 game two and against Seattle isn't that kind of eerie how this stuff is kind of you know we we are first we get our first wins of the season under Dan Campbell we hold the opposition to 20 points in both of those games. We win an, a game in overtime out of the first two games of the season. The same scenario as last year. So last year we beat the Chiefs. We lost. And they got the ball. Seattle got the ball to win the toss, went down and scored. So literally what the Rams went through last night is what we went through a year ago, almost to the day, which is crazy, right? So Dan Campbell, man, with the press conference, uh, love these, love the transparency of our coach. And I love the fact that he's like, yo, we got to get better. Like, by no means am I trying to say that we played our best ball. Nobody played their best ball. Oh, I almost forgot. How could I forget this? I think it came from, okay, it was in, it was in the other press conference from this morning, but talked about St. Brown. And he actually brought up St. Brown in this one too, about how uh, it was just one of those games. Yeah, I did miss it. It was just one of those games for St. Brown. He just, they tried to get him the ball. It just wasn't working. They, they, whether it was the coverage, whether it was the trip and fall, or whether it just wasn't working. And what was the last time we saw that happen? Like, we don't see that. St. Brown is always open. Yesterday was a tough game for him. Just to be clear, I don't think St. Brown's play had anything to do with his contract. I don't think Goff's play had anything to do with his contract. I think eventually... Eventually, Saint, Saint was due for a bad game. He was due for a bad game, and yesterday was that bad game. But you better believe he's going to come back with a vengeance. I'm sure he's probably working right now. Maybe that and doing Little Caesars commercials, but he's working right now uh, to not let that happen again. But put it in the comment section. When was the last time that Amon Ross St. Brown was held to a game like yesterday. Yesterday, he had three receptions for 13 yards. He did not have a touchdown. I don't know how many targets he had. But what what was his – yesterday had to be his worst game, like since his rookie season. But put it in the comment section below. You can either put the, the rookie season or you can put uh, – from year two, or at least when we won, when he caught his first touchdown pass, and from that moment on became that guy. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Want to make sure I get this out, man, so you guys know uh, that the mini helmets for Green Gridiron for the Detroit Lions are in. These were out of stock since their release, which was back in May when the uniform reveal. I want to say it was May, right? It could have been April. I don't know when it was. Offseason went so fast, and these have been out of stock since then, but they're in stock now. And the coolest part about it is underneath, you can get a custom visor to go with even a mini helmet face mask, man. That is super cool, but that's not the best part. The best part is the more you spend, the more you save. So if you spend $50, you spend $50, you get five off. You spend 100 you get 10 off. You, get, you spend 250 for the high rollers, you get 40 off. 
Then it gets real good. You spend 500, you save 20%, save $100 off. And if you spend a rack, as we like to say, you get 25% off, which is $250. And let me just sprinkle. I'm going to sprinkle you, man, like E40. I'm going to sprinkle on that seasoning salt, make it a little more tasty for you guys as I keep doing that. I'm going to make it a little more tasty for you guys. The promo code LS24, that is always going to be a thing because this is only a temp. Uh, for limited time, all right? But the promo code will always be a thing. But you know what What won't always be a thing? The fact that you can stack these. So you can also, you're going to save money here just naturally, and then you can use my promo code in order to save more. I'll tell you what, it does have a zero in it, the, the amount that you save. So now's the time to step up, get your collectible before they are gone. And I want to put this in here too. I know this video is running long, but I forgot to do this yesterday. Through the day, I know it's a little late. I'm going to make sure that this is the first video so you have time. Through the rest of today, you can use the promo code if you want uh, the lion behind me, any size, between of the four sizes you can choose from. You will get another $15 off for a total of $30 off your purchase if you use promo code uh, LS15. Running through today in honor of the Lions win and their opening game, you will get an additional $15 off. And to here's the best part, though. It's just I'm just all full of good news today. There are two of the smaller Lions, the 18-inch Lions, that are already made in preparation of the Lions season. They are in blue, Honolulu blue, of course, the 3D Lion. So if you, I guess, are the first two to order, then yours can be shipped out immediately, all right? But even if you are not those first two guys, you can use that promo code for the rest of the day and get an additional $15 off of your uh, Lion, 3D Lion, man. And I'm telling you, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. So consider doing all of that. Check out all the links in the description as well. This channel is brought to you by viewers, members, and subscribers just like you. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.